Thank you. Our next, anyone else like to address the city council on this public hearing? Please come to the microphone. Give us your name and address, please. My name is Horace Cooper, 510 Harrod, Flint, Michigan, uh, Fifth Ward. I'd like to uh, piggyback on what the gentleman just mentioned about raises. Um, it come to my attention that uh, not only is, is it not time for raises, but I think that the, uh, our councilmen should be reinstated what they or was originally being paid. Uh, at this point, they've been, uh, they've received deductions to, to the amount of $200 every other week, and, and it's impossible for them to, to have the confidence to do their job. You know, it's not impossible, but we have some that's, that's doing their job under these uh, circumstances. And um, <clears throat> concerning the public safety millage of 2012 through 2017, it was, um, I think it was $5.3 million allotted for $5 million a year for five years. Where is this money being allocated? What, what's happening with this money, this public safety millage for the years 2012 through 2017, that's a five-year period. And uh, I just want to have some, some questions answered here. One, one, more, one more issue that I'd like to, like to address. Uh, I was talking to the, the lady right here. What's your name? Carolyn. <coughs> Carolyn. Shannon. Carolyn Shannon mentioned to me, and, and I took notice that the same thing is happening with my face towel. <laughs> Uh, the water is being recycled here in Flint to, I don't know to what extreme, but um, she, she brought to my attention that in the morning her face towel is rigid and hard. And it, it really struck me because I'm having the same experience, you know, my face towel the next day is hard. Mm -hmm. so, so she also mentioned, she's a lady of wisdom, she also mentioned, I'm, I'm, I'm still in her words. Uh, that if the water in Flint is being recycled at the rate of however it's being recycled, if it's doing that to our face towels, I wonder what the long-term effects is on our bodies. So we, we just want some questions answered. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council? <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Gilcrest. Good evening, uh, Mr. President, to uh, Mr. President, and to the Honorable Clerk, uh, Ms. Ms. Brown, and to all of the, the council members. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I, 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 I come before this council, Mr. President, I know that you know that I try uh, not to come. Um, if, but, but I think that there is a time now when one has to come and make uh, awareness of where we are and what we're trying to do and how we're trying to do it. And when we, uh, uh, we don't have anything before us to let us know what it is that we're trying to do, no more than to hear in the news what they say that they're trying to do. And when they're talking about uh, cutting the police, took a vote the other night to uh, no confidence vote on the chief of the fire department. Uh, we face some terrible times, and I think that if there's any kind of way, Mr. President, that there can be uh, funds uh, uh, moved in the direction to save the police. I heard the news the other day that there is, is, is being suggested that you get a, 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 another counselor for the police department. You, you got our chief of police, and what is he going to recommend to uh, the financial manager and the mayor and to the council? But you need some more police. You don't need to pay eighty-five thousand dollars for that. That's free information. That's common sense information. So we don't need uh, to hire nobody for that. I'm asking this council, Mr. President, and 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 you. I know I know that you're a leader. You've shown yourself in leadership. I, I, I know that from you. I'm asking you and this council 
to take some responsibility. The financial manager keeps talking about that he does not need this council to approve nothing. Well, then so be it. Let him go right ahead and do it by himself. And stop allowing him to use you to do what he said he can do by himself. We, we just cannot sit back in this community and continue to see this community deteriorate, 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 and all we keep saying is the financial manager is causing these problems. We know that he is. We know that he is, but don't you uh, join in with him. Let him fight by himself. Let the people know, Mr. President, and this council, that they elected you and you stand with the people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Thank you as well. Good evening. I'm Ms. Roberts, 602 West Holbrook. Hold, hold the mic down just a little bit so everybody can hear you. Thank you. And uh, I'm in the first ward. Uh, Eric Mays is my councilman. I just want to say that. Uh, uh, I am a voting citizen and I vote in all of the elections. I come down here and I vote absentee. I'm a senior citizen. I vote in every election. And I have not voted for no financial e manager, emergency manager. We didn't vote for him. We voted for you all. And why do we have to take this mess? Why don't we get rid of the financial manager and work with the council people? I mean, I can understand if you need a raise or whatever, but he's getting all the money, so where's the money coming from to do anything else with? Thank you. Next speaker, need your name and address for the record, please. My name is uh, Mo Maurice Wheeler, 4511 Christmas Street, 3rd Ward. I'm here on behalf of uh, St. Luke's, Sister Carol, Sister Judy. They, they uh, got a beautiful program which I'm the supervisor of. We just built a uh, landscaping company. Uh, and it's, it's, for people, it's for young men who were incarcerated, who the city threw away, who y'all just kept locking up, uh, uh, brutalizing. They gave us a second chance when our family members put us out their homes and said we couldn't live there anymore because, you know, life was rough and we couldn't get a job. Uh, they gave me a fresh start. They, they start. they work with miracles and, and blessings. I don't see anything coming their way. I, I'm just, uh, I'm just, it's just a meeting about funding. I understand everybody got the issues about security, police, this and that, because I, I, I got your answer. The reason why uh, crime is high is because the morals are down in Flint, Michigan. I was here my whole life. I'm 30, 38 years old. I'll be 39 in three days. Uh, and I see where people just trample their lawns, where uh, neighbors uh, hate one another, and there's so much stress. It's because we look around and it looks like you're in a foreign country instead of Flint, Michigan. Uh, if, you, if, if, if you could put some, some, some funding behind that program at St. Luke's, which is showing positive results, I'm, I'm right here, a miracle in your face. I was the one that used to boop, boop, hit your car alarms, lock your car doors, hug your purses close. Now elderly people come and they rush out their doors because I'm out there doing good things in the community. You know what I mean? It, Thank you. This program is providing jobs, it's providing hope, you know. If you want the crime to stop, you got to bring back the hope to the city. Jobs, there's hope in jobs, you know what I mean? And that's all I'm telling you all that. You're throwing all this money around, look at the small people, because the small people are making a big impact on the community. I don't see nobody else around. I see these elderly little women at St. Luke's that have a heart bigger than this room that's giving everybody a second chance when no, not, you didn't even you want to have a chance for yourself. You know what I mean? So I'm here, I, I, I work uh, nine hours grueling today to try to make our community look beautiful. I still had enough energy to get on the city bus, pay the 185, come down and, and, and let my voice be heard because it does count. It does count, man. You know, if you want to change, look within yourself, look around. When I clean my grandmother's yard, when I'm out there doing these jobs, other people are coming out and starting to do the same thing. Somebody had to be the jump off. Somebody got to be the forerunner. Somebody got to start. It's, it's got to start somewhere. Why not right here on the north side of Flint, Michigan, on Lindale, Pasadena, at St. Luke's, where they are doing great things by themselves. No help from y'all. 
I'm asking for just a little bit of help because if they're doing this with pocket change, if they really had some fun, they really could make a, he a heck of an impact. I just, I thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, I know this is public hearing, but Megan Hunter made a statement the last time she was here and Sister Carol and Sister Judy was here that she was going to make sure that her office, the economic development, was going to make sure that they help St. Luke's New Life Center. And I want to make sure that we hold, um, D Dane, make sure that you hold Megan accountable for helping New Life Center. Because every budget that we passed here, we had money for New Life Center. Every budget. So you make sure that Megan Hunter lives up to the words that she spoke the last time that she was here, that she was going to help New Life Center. And it's in the second ward, and they are doing great work. So thank you. And Mr. President, piggybacking on Ms. Poplar, I went to that graduation ceremony, and that particular line crew that's cutting grass if Megan don't, we've got a duty between now and the 23rd to meet again, move money around, and put 10 or 20,000 over there. I see the money everywhere. And so I'm glad Ms. Poplar chimed in because I know it's a public hearing and I know the rules is different for me. So thank you, Ms. Poplar. Thank you, St. Luke. We need to make sure we move the money around. That's what this budget hearing is about. Y'all tell us where to move money to. God bless you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Christine Robinson. I live in Mott Park, 845 Frank Street. Thank you, Mr. Neely, for being our councilman there. And thank you, Mr. Kincaid, for hearing me tonight. I want to just go on the record as saying I'm trying really hard to support the emergency manager's job isn't easy. There's only so much coming in and there's a lot that's got to go out. I've lived on a shoestring budget for the last 30 some years and I know exactly how awful that can be. But you can't do it on the backs of the people out trying to work. Okay, I um, am in charge as vice president of the Mott Park Neighborhood Association and chairman of our revitalization committee. I'm in charge of mowing all the lawn, the vacant properties in Mott Park. There's 1,300 properties in Mott Park and I lost track at 100. How many are vacant? We only have enough money to be mowing about 35. There are people that want to buy some of these properties, and it's just so difficult with the um, problems with facing the city, like schools and crime and water. And that's our biggest one right now. We have a lot of landlords in there. They can't get their properties rented. That's exorbitant amounts of money for the water. It's like. It's like, and, and I don't want to keep harping about the water. Everybody comes up here and says, you know, I'm on a fixed income and I can't afford the water. And the only reason I can afford the water is because I don't have a house payment because I pay cash for my house. But, you know, this is ridiculous. I was trying to get one rented down the street. I had friends coming in to look at it. And when they found out they'd be paying about $150 or $200 for a family of six, they had to go rent somewhere else. Right. This is happening across the city all the time. I'm committed to Mott Park. It's a beautiful little place in our city. It's a bright spot in the city, but we cannot, we can't, we just can't do that. We, I, I don't even know how to say it. I'm sure everybody in the room agrees that the water is ridiculous. Right. So I came, I came from Grand Rapids exactly one year ago right now. I pay the water bill in Grand Rapids to this day. It is four times higher here in Flint than it is Grand Rapids. So I don't know how you expect the landlords and the people that buy and sell properties. That's what I'm trying to do is buy and fix up and sell properties again. I've done three so far in the last year I've been here, but the people can't afford the water. Right. I brought some people from Florida in my last property. Like, I, how am I supposed to sit across from the closing table and face them, knowing that the crime is so terrible? I provided the security in that house for three months for them just to get them going. Okay, but the water, what am I supposed to say to these people? I'm just kind of not looking at them across the table. You know, so I brought somebody from Florida to Flint in one of my properties. But this, you just, you just, can't, you just can't keep making money off the backs of the people that are out doing the work. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, excuse me, Mr. President, can you let them know that they don't have to sign the paper to come speak? They can just walk to yeah. the mic and speak? We, I'll, I'll remind them again. Okay, thank yeah. you, sir. Yeah, this is on the budget. Yes, this is the public hearing on the budget. So if you want to talk to the city council about the city budget, please give us your name and address for the record. Thank you. I'm Pastor Bob Rebettis. <clears throat> I live at 3800 Mason Street, Flint, Michigan. This is my first time of being at a meeting, so uh, I don't know very much about this, but I'm learning a lot about it. But I do know that <clears throat> back here a couple of months ago, I had a 400 or something dollar water deposit I had to pay. I paid the deposit. I thought I was paying my bill, but I found out I wasn't paying my bill, I was paying a deposit. Right. So I still was still in the hole with the water bill for the next month yet, right. Right. still. But that is, uh, I don't know how a senior citizen with less than $758 a month. Would you please, could you please speak into the mic uh, so we can hear seven, you? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, with $58 a month coming in with a gas bill in the wintertime. Four and five hundred dollars a month. Then the water bill that went up to five and six hundred dollars a month. Then if it gets shut off, you got to pay a four hundred and fifty dollar deposit. This is really um, I, I don't know what you would call it. I, I can't even find the words to say what you would call it. Besides oppressing the poor, oppressing the poor people. You know we cannot pay these bills. Let me tone down a minute. I'm a preacher. I'm going to kind of tone Go down ahead. a bit. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, preacher. You know, everybody up here and everybody in there know we can't afford to pay these bills. Right. So I don't understand why y'all keep on, whoever you are, responsible. I don't care if you're right. a manager, whoever the manager, this man that's in is doing all this, raising the water bill. We have to pay water bills and we can bring my own self in this water. It's not fixed good to drink. I pray and ask the Lord to heal this water because this is not good water. I say it is not good water. We shouldn't even be drinking it. It stinks and it's nasty. We shouldn't even be drinking it. But I don't know how we're going to do this, but we're going to manage to get through this because Pharaoh, remember Pharaoh got drowned. In. Amen. Pharaoh, he, he, got, he done got drowned at one time, he's going to get drowned again right. because the seeds you sow, you're going to reap them. It's coming to us now, but it will return to you. Amen. Now, we're going to work together and try to get these things straightened out for the city of Flint. And I'm going to be here if I have to live on the street. I'm not moving. Ain't nobody running me out of Flint. You, they can oppress, oppress, depress, and do whatever else they think they might want to do. But I will be here in Flint, Michigan, trying to help. Our people, and not only our people, the people of the city of Flint, black, white, green, yellow, red, and white, ain't got no purpose. Thank you. I can't pay that water bill. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Pelvin Martin. I was born in Flint 83 years ago. And I'm having a big problem with the water. Right now, my church is closed up simply because of the amount of money that I've already paid, and I owe something like 15 more hundred dollars, and I need some help. I'm hoping that we will come together, especially in the Seventh War, because I'm having a problem out there with my water. Can I address that? <laughs> well, Mr. 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 Thank Pre you. Mr. I, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, we started, well, so go ahead. Well, Mr. Right. President, I just want to make a statement before the people get to leave. I wrote a letter to the United States Attorney General Office asking the Attorney General to send the feds in here and investigate these atrocities that is going on in this city. I submitted the letter, and if he ever responds, I would do a petition, but I'm fighting to get the emergency, get the, the United States Attorney General through the um, 
Department of Justice to send the feds in here to investigate what this emergency manager has done to us. And I want to put this on the record. I want to put this on the record. And I've done this. Congressperson Galloway, did you um, For the resident that just came to the podium, you and I spoke personally at my um, meeting in April. I took your information, and your information was given to the head of the water department. And I have tried on multiple occasions because you gave me the address to your church and you gave me the ad address to your residence. And I have left multiple messages for you. It has gone to the emergency manager. Um, I think it was even seen by Howard Croft. But I have been unsuccessful at getting a response from you. So if you want to see me after the meeting, we can move forward because I do have a copy of that information in my office. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, Matt Taylor, uh, 334 Dillia, Flint, Michigan, 48505. I'll make it very brief because um, our councilman, uh, Montez Davis, uh, stated very um, eloquent. The city is under siege illegally. Um, they imposed the receiver in. The people of the city of Flint signed petitions. Those petitions was passed. They were overlooked because they went to the state. And where we are now is another referendum that is illegal as well. So I think Councilman Davis said it best. We can holler about the water rates. We can holler about our resources and investments going up the drain. But until we bring the U.S. Attorney General in, to do a forensic financial audit, to do an investigation of the illegal things that's going on here in the city of Flint, the citizens will be subjected to much worse. You guys represent us. And for the last three years, we had no representation. And and I'm not saying this, I'm not saying this for an applaud. I'm saying this because I see the community being tore apart, our resources being pawned out, and something has to be done. And if we, I haven't heard anything from our representatives from the federal level, from the state level. The only one that I have heard from is our council person, Mr. Davis, or Councilman Davis, excuse me. But we have to do something to come together. We have you nine council persons here. We have to do something to represent the people. And if we don't do that, then nobody here is fit to be here. Nobody. We have to bring the attorney, the U.S. Attorney General in here, and I would, um, Mr. President, or I will defer to my counsel person to make a referral uh, to ask the U.S. Attorney General to come to the city of Flint to investigate these findings and do a forensic audit so we can put this city back in place. Thank you, Mr. President. You, Mr. Mr. President, Mr. President, um, I would like to say to Mr. Taylor, Mr. Davis, and to the audience here today, this is a budget hearing, but I can tell you for a fact, there was litigation in federal court a few weeks ago, and the federal judge is writing an opinion now, and he will rule as to whether or not the emergency manager um, is legal. So I can assure you that Mr. Davis is not the only one speaking out and that there's a federal lawsuit that has been had all arguments and we're waiting on the decision right now to find out whether emergency manager law is correct. Keeping this hearing on track, 
this is a budget hearing. You had one person from Mark Park talk about water rates. You had a Mason Street pastor talk about water rates. And then you had Mr. Martin, who I know from Canaan, talk about water rates. The more I hear water rates, the more I'm going to tell my colleagues to go back to the drawing board and look at Lauren water rates. This is a hearing where the city council, the nine of us, can do what we want. The emergency manager got out of the way, and I want to make it clear. Let's see if we can put together a budget that the citizens want, and then we'll go back to federal court that we're already in. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> let me just so that we can move this meeting forward and everybody get the opportunity to speak. I've let some of my colleagues on the council speak, and I'm going to ask you all now to right. allow the public to address the city council. We've all had, and then we will respond at the end of the meeting. So I don't want to delay, and I don't want to make the public be here any longer than what they need to be. So this is a public hearing on the budget. Please address the city council on the budget. The next public hearing will be on the street light assessment, and then I'll open it up to council members to address the public at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we need your name and address for the record, and thank you for allowing me to interrupt you. My name is Valerie Welch, and I live at 310 West Patterson, and I'm new at this also. So regardless to the budget, I just wanted to say, still, even with the budget, I think everything starts at home, and I think sometimes you guys need to um, have a certain level of professionalism. Like I said, I'm new at this, and lately when I've been reading the news, I've been seeing councilmen taking their teeth out, councilmen showing their bridge car. How can you be taken seriously for anything, even the budget considering? And I also heard you guys ask for a raise. I live in the city, and it's ridiculous, and I'm appalled at you guys asking for the raise. I work for the union. I do several different jobs. I don't get paid. I do it for the heart, for what needs to be done in the city. And I don't understand why you guys want to raise when you want to cut the police, when you want to cut the firefighters. I don't understand why you think you deserve that. Far as, I'm, far as when I look at it, you, get, you take the job for rec, you know, representing us in the city. We in the city, we working. You got mothers who cut off from welfare who don't even get nothing but a bridge card. I don't get a bridge card either, Mr. Davis. You know, you have to go to work for your money. I heard you didn't vote for the raise. I appreciate that. You look good in your suit. I'm glad you dressed today. You know, you need to be professional in what you guys are doing when it relates to the budget and everything else. Thank you. Thank you. Our next public speaker. Well, hold on. You, just this young lady, and then you can speak right behind her. Okay. Thank you. My name is Suzanne Broach, and I live in 109 West Ruth. And I was just wondering, should we be drinking this water? Seriously, I really need to know, do you guys drink this water? Do you? I mean, like, you, do you drink it? Do you drink it? Do anybody drink this water? Do you drink it? I have drunk it. No, do you drink it now? I have drunk it now, Would yes. you drink it now? Yes. I have drunk Would it. Would you drink something right now? Yeah, if it's in the hallway. You want to see me? Sure. Okay, go ahead. Keep talking. I'll and, go and, and then I would like to know if this water is safe. Could I have the report saying that it's safe? I know how to read, and I know that it's reports and everything. So where could I find that report at? And another thing I would like to say is why is it such a scavenger hunt to find out when the city council meeting is? I have to go over to the liquor store or the man next door tell me, well, Eric Mays told me that the meeting going to be on the 19th or the meeting going to be today. It's like why y'all, when y'all find out that it's going to be a city council meeting, why you just can't put it on your website? It's not that hard to have your webmaster to put it on your website. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Our, <clears throat> Ma'am, just while you're taking your seat, our next city council will be on June 23rd at 530 right here. And I don't know how safe it is, but I have drunk it. <laughs> My name is Tommy Brown. And uh, I'm living in Flint, but all the problems I see, and I, and I understand what the people are saying, but the, my question is this. If we had an, an emergency manager before, why do we have an emergency manager again? Huh? 
And it seemed like to me if the emergency manager doing all the work, we don't sure need nobody else. I think we need I think we really need a volunteer government here. You know? Because I think that by the emergency manager being here now, this thing ought to be cleaned up once and for all, that the city don't go back in the red over and over again. Because each time you go back in the red and red again, you bring the emergency manager, you get more trouble, more trouble, more trouble. I paid all my taxes in 2013. I get a bill Saturday saying I got taxes in the link once I got to pay them by the end of this month. You know, it said they nickel and dime with me here in Flint. And the person that got a job, you're riding him, you're riding him, you're riding him. After a while, the mule's going to break down. And what you got left? That's the question. What you got left? You know why the city's in the problem it is? It needs to turn to God. In other words, the people don't know that they're cursed because they're not serving God. This land is desolate. GM is not God. God is God, and his name is Jesus. Except you see Jesus turn from your sin, son. Huh? Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Do like the Bible say. You're gonna have bigger trouble. And again, my final thing. Why? Why wouldn't you say you let up the police? You got to let the criminals know you don't have enough police for them to start the work. Why don't you pass a bill to charge the criminals for their crimes that they do? Uh, I don't like coming down there, but I'm getting tired of being nickel and dime. I try to buy a house and try to live in peace. But I can't live in a house because every time I turn around, they go a bill, I'm being nickel and dime for something that the city is done. Why am I, why am I paying for the MTA? Why am I paying for my colleges? Those are businesses. And they need to stand on their own two feet to like everybody else. That's the question that I have. And once again, we got an emergency manager now. Either y'all are capable of doing the job or you're not. If you're not capable of doing the job, just put the emergency manager in here and just let him do it all by himself and don't have to pay nobody extra. Everybody needs to get up and get a job. Quit begging. Thank you. You know, all summer I've worked with the majority I, of you all. Can I get your name and address, please, for the record? James Moore from 4709 Wisner Street, Flint, Thank Michigan. You, James. Uh, most of the summer I've been coming out, I've been working with most of the councilmen, and I just want to say thank you for not quitting, because it's easy to quit when it's a lot of problems going on. It really is, but somebody has got to stand up here to try to get this here budget passed, and I know that Mr. Freeman over there has been working all summer on that finance department to try to work something out that the city of Flint, the people of the city of Flint, can get behind, hopefully so, and don't be too broke from. Hope you did a good job. Our next speaker. Uh, my yeah. name is Robert LaShawn Taylor. I live 346 East Capitol Road. My, my reason is here is to support the people who are having problems with their um, taxes, um, with their water bills and things like this. I got a mother that's 75 years old. We've been living in our house for 50 years. All these taxes that they were piling up on the people in the city of Flint. My mother was just talking about moving out the house and let the house go. Because all the bills that they're plying up on them, it was, she only gets so much a month. And the city of Flint know this, and everybody know this. These people are 75 years old or older. So by the city of Flint going up on all these water taxes, you know, why is they pressing these people to move up out of Flint? Every time you go up on taxes, I know people say they want to move up out of Flint. Right. I want to know, is the people, is Flint citizens? Is they Flint citizens? Do you want your mother to move out of her house? Do you want your mother crying about not paying her water bill? How is she going to pay her taxes? Right. How would all of y'all get a check? This ain't the 60s. This ain't the 70s. We don't have General Motors here no more. Right. Stop depending on General Motors. Let's get the job done. Leave our police alone. Leave our firemen alone. Let them do their responsibility. Y'all know all these criminals out here. I know I did 33 years in the penitentiary. Got out uh, like 18 months ago. Right. Let the police do their job. Put 
put more police on the streets, in the back streets, where all the criminal activities go on. <laughs> and, and stop squeezing these peoples out their money and let them live. And y'all pay some of their taxes on their houses and stop taking their houses. <laughs> Thank you. Our next speaker on the budget. Hello, my name is Mary Joyce Campbell and I live at 2745 Walcott Street. And I am appalled at the city of Flint. It looks terrible, it looks bad, and I'm doing my part to keep my neighborhood up, okay? And the budget here, we don't need to raise our taxes, we don't need to raise our water, and we don't need to lose any police officers. The master plan to me is to get people out of the city of Flint. I, that's how I see it, because I look around, I went down Gray Street today. There was almost 30 houses empty. One little section had about eight, five or six beautiful homes on it, but the rest looked like a war zone. You know, and that's not, that's just one street. It's so sad to me. I see it just keep on deteriorating, deteriorating, and I look at y'all faces and I wonder, do you really care? I wonder, do you really, really care? Over here on Rankin Street and Forest Hill, go down there. Every one of you go down there. It's too pitiful. It's sad. And I seen a church group last month or two months ago down there cleaning it up. But today, it looked like the same thing that was down there two months ago. I got pictures last year that I took. It's terrible. Down by Hurley Hospital. You seen that on Mackin Road? Have anybody seen that? What can we do? We can only do so much. And I'm telling you, I ain't gonna let my neighborhood, Boundary Square Community Association is out there doing their part. And everybody else needs to step up and volunteer too. If you see some blight, get rid of it if you can. And I know you can. Everybody here can. I'm mad. I'm angry. And I don't want my, to pay no more water bills. I don't want my water bill to be higher than what it already is. And I'm not complaining either because it's only $147. And last month it went down to $79. Now you go figure. And the girl told me today hers was $750. She was going downtown to find out why. Please keep our police officers. This blight, most of this blight is because of people coming here taking stuff out of these houses. These houses were viable and they could have been sustainable if we had people protecting them. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Bethany Hazard and I live in West Flint. And what I see, what you guys are doing is just running everybody out. I'm the last, almost last homeowner left on my block. I'm the only one that picks up trash. I mow some of the renters' lawns. They let their lawns get up to here. Because you drove the homeowners out of here by not sending the police when they came, and by raising the water so high, all the taxpayers left. I'm about the last one left on my block. And you, you, you don't care what you're doing to the people here. That's all I wanna say, you're running everybody out and I'm next. My house is gonna be a shambles, scrapped out and everything else. It makes me sick watching what you guys are doing here to the people here. My best friends, all, my, all the homeowners are gone off my block. I'm, I'm the last one left and I thank you for that. Hello, my name is Joseph Whiteside. Um, I represent the elders and the, and the youth. I live at 2105 Kentucky Avenue, and it's, it's, you know, the elders want to come so bad to get an understanding of the budgets and what's going on in their lives, and it's so caught up in here that, you know, but just by listening to everyone, you guys haven't even figured it out. So what do I suppose to go when I leave here to tell a 90-year-old woman that's living at a burnt-up house next to her that no one's in there. 
I'm getting yeah. sick and tired of getting up, have to go to college, and protect these elders and the youth of our tomorrow. We set examples to them that there, there is no tomorrow for them, except for the grace of God. I came to a conclusion last year. I said, you know, in order to wake something up, you have to be a part of something. So I built a seven-foot cross, and I walked it for two miles. No one down at City Hall represented something positive of that magnitude. I didn't do it for me. I did it for the grace of God. Would nobody support me to even support the neighborhood because it's so decayed and dope fiends so much around? Wouldn't nobody, even a police officer wouldn't walk with me. But see, I'm still going to go ahead and do it alone, I guess. But when I go home, from coming from this meeting, you rest assured that I can tell the elders something. Because they at home, 90, 85, 77, scared for their life, and y'all said, we'll put this money over here. We'll put this money over here. OK, how about this? Put the police back on the street, not in cars, but on their feet. Right. It shouldn't have residents protecting other residents from gangster thugs, drug dealers, pimps, prostitutes, however it may be. But if I have to do that on the east side and any other side, I'll continue to do it to the day I die. Thank you. Thank you. Amen, Brother Whiteside. My name is Naira Sharif. I live in Flint. I am not going to give my address aloud because it's filmed and I live by myself, but I do have the address, I'll pass it up. Um, I'm just thinking about like a brief history lesson because I remember when we had an emergency financial manager under Public Act 72, um, under Ed Kurtz, one of the things that he did was he raised the water affidavit for people who rent. And um, I consider myself a champion of the poor and I believe in looking at data to support stuff, and we have nearly 50% of the residents are renters. One of the first things that the, this, not this particular city council, but the Flint City Council did after Ed Kurtz was gone was they restored their pay. They did not lower that water affidavit for renters. Now we have an emergency manager again, and they once again raise the water affidavit for renters. And now someone, if they're coming here and they're renting, they have to pay $450 just to turn the water on. Now with these water rates increasing, I mean, I think it's immoral, unjust, and just flat out foul that we as a city continuously enforce and impose these unconscionable fees on the poor. Now you have people, because they cannot afford to pay their water, now they're in a situation, especially if they are mothers, that DHS is coming in and snatching their kids because it's unsafe because they do not have water on. Right. Right. Now something needs to happen with this. Right. Now I'm looking to you as leaders to roll back these horrific fees on poor people. Because when we talk about stuff, it's not like we, and I intentionally use the word poor people and people who live in poverty, because they need to be visible. They may not be here, and I know with a lot of this paradigm we're talking about people who are homeowners, yes, it's foul for homeowners, but it's more foul for renters. It's more foul for our young people who disproportionately live in poverty. Right. So I'm hoping that you will, with this budget, roll some of that stuff back and not just looking at your own pockets, but look at what's happening out in the community. Amen. Hi, my name is Marie Gibson, and I live over on Orange Lane, and I have a serious concern um, yes, I am concerned about the water bill, but right now I'm concerned about the house that got burned down over the way they tore the apartments down across from Northwestern. That thing was torn, that burned up last year, and it is gross over there. And I'm going to turn in a blight form. I don't know if it's going to do anything, but I'm going to turn in the blight form to request somebody to come out and bless that area and clean that mess up. 
But then as a homeowner, I am also scared as whatever because the house next door to me has been torn up. I've called the landlord last year and got the grass cut, but somebody has torn and gutted that house up. They came out. They came out and fixed the door, and that's all they have done is fix the door on the house. And now the grass is way up here. I've called them four times, and I'm not getting any response of when they're going to come out. So it's like we need help out here. Um, I am concerned about the water bill because I have various people that I'm talking to, and they are almost about to get rid of their houses because of the water bill. But I am still concerned about the houses. Two houses on Orange Lane right now, they need to go. Park Belt needs to go. Bell Creek needs to go. Okay, and I'm going to turn in the blight form, but I just, you know, can it's somebody my help me it's out? My Thank you. My name is A.C. Dumas, and I do live at 533 East Rankin Street for the last 30 years. I just want to say this that I know that you all are not in charge. I don't care what you put on the budget. If the financial manager or says no, then it's what? No. If he says yes, then it's yes. And for you, for people to believe an illusion that this city council can lower water rates, put more, am I right, councilman? It's an illusion. I'm glad you had the public hearing. So we can just say what we wanted to say. But when the budget goes, a council, a mayor budget, that's madness. Because it's not true. You know I have a radio show, The Truth Shall Make You Free, every Saturday morning at 9.30 on WFLT. Listen to it. Because we be trying to tell the truth. This is not the council's budget. This is not the mayor's budget. This is darn nail early. And, he, and Mr. Gilchrist said it so true. Well, since it's his budget, let him do his budget. You think he's going to put police officers on the street because you all said it? It sounds good. They're not. It ain't going to happen. You got eight police, uh, uh, state troopers, I think, or whatever you got, and that's going to suffice. But you know what? You all voted for whatever the emergency manager brings up, you vote yes on it. You vote yes on it. You, yes, you did. Don't act like you didn't. Those that voted, those that were here. The pipeline, you're talking about nasty water. Councilman uh, Nolan was the only one that voted no. Rest of you voted yes. I that was Mr. Mays, I'm I talking now. I, okay, I well, listen. Before the new council persons got here, those people voted yes. Now we're drinking this toxic water. My mother told me, and, and I know about the brown, at the next morning when you, when you uh, rinse out your washcloth, you know, I thought it was some dye, you know, you get colored washcloth, but she had a white washcloth, and it was brown. Just, I mean, we're going to speak, but, you know, this is just for naught. All this is for naught. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, I apologize to Mr. Dumas for interrupting him. I just shouldn't have did that. I'll wait to the end to clear up the facts. I apologize, Mr. Dumas, but I just couldn't stand to hear that wrong information. It won't happen again. God bless you. Thank you. I can help it, ma'am. Please give us your name and uh, address, and this is on the city council or the budget for the city. It's not the My city council. My name is Janice budget. L. Muhammad, and I live on the north end of Flint. And I'd like to say one thing: I did hear uh, what the man said, and uh, <laughs> Eric did vote. I mean, he abstained in that vote. So I just want all y'all to know. He was he abstained. Anyway, whatever. Uh, I would like to not complain about anything, but I want to be a voice of reason and warning. Every one of you have a district that, or that you're, uh, I want to say, uh, the voice for. 
Um, and I commend you for wanting to be that voice, but I see a lot of our council people not being the voice of the people, but being their own voice, saying what they feel or what they think need to be said instead of finding out what your constituents want. Because clearly, clearly, their voice isn't being heard. Our voice isn't being heard. I just want to be a voice of warning right now to everyone in here. When you have an entity that want you gone, they do things like raise the water, raise the taxes. They do things like charge you for this, that, and the other thing. And they have us paying for what they want to do to fix up the area. I mean, Flint can't tell me they don't have money to go on the north end because look at what they're doing. Imagine Flint. Oh, we can imagine it all. Right. And the master's plan is not our plan. You see, what I'm saying now is that people are going to get so upset that you won't be able to control them. And then that's when the boys is going to come in and mow us down. You are pawns. I'm a pawn. Everybody in here is being a pawn. And I would like to say just one more thing because they clapped and I had to stop. I'm letting you know. Okay, I hear you. Now, be warned. Help your constituents to know what day it is and what time it is. And to stay calm, stay alert, to, and not to go crazy. Please do that. Talk to them. Have, have a town hall meetings and talk to them about it. If you don't know how to and what to say, my name is Janice Muhammad. My telephone number is area, co area code 81078. I mean, wait a minute, 235 0061. Call me and I will do it for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Chris Del Maroney and I live in Flint, Michigan. Uh, regarding the emergency manager, I, I'm not sure what he has done since he's been here. I, I don't see any really drastic cuts that he's implemented. Um, what needs to be done in our budget is for him to take away the authority of the Downtown Development Authority to issue tickets. The Downtown Development Authority is hiring someone to write parking tickets downtown. That could be done by a Flint City police officer. It gives more visibility to the police downtown and an officer downtown could then be freed up to go out onto the streets. That parking structure, the Rutherford parking structure, that needs to be wrestled away from the Downtown Development Authority. We continue to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to that, it, it's to, to, uh, to uh, support the bonds there, to back the bonds. Uh, the water, I, we need a, some relief in the water bill, and I consider that an off-budget item. Okay, because the money into the water fund does not go into the general fund, or at least it shouldn't. So if we reduce the water rates, there is no cost to the city. There is, things can still get done. There's still money coming in, just not as much, and we can still work on some of the infrastructure. There's no need to take care of everything in one year, two years, or in five years. Think of buying a house. It would be great to pay it off in year one, but most people can't do that, so they stretch it out for 30 years. Now, I'm not saying take care of our problems over the next 30 years. It needs to be an ongoing thing. But there's no need to have the Cadillac in year one and two when we can drive the car in a Chevrolet, okay? Um, we need to stop the hiring. In regards to council and the mayor's wages, um, I believe you all deserve more. Not the person itself, but the position. But here's the problem. Our city, our community, cannot afford the higher wage. It's like the Flint School Board. You know, to pay a superintendent over $100,000 a year when you're laying off teachers and closing buildings and, and taxing the people to fix up the schools, it, it, yeah, that position might be worth $100,000 more plus, $100,000 plus, 
but we cannot afford it as a community, so we can't pay that, okay? Um, there should be no new hiring. I mean, how can we do this? We don't have the money. I mean, we're, we're basically broke, okay? So then we're going to go out and hire more people? It's like your household. I mean, if you have no money coming in, you don't just go out and buy something. But, and if I can just sum up yeah, real quick. Up, Chris. For, for the, the residents that are here this evening, let there be no mistake that there are people in this audience tonight from the administration who are in favor of raising our, pro, our, our, raising our income taxes. So whether it's an income tax raise or a water rate increase, it's still money coming out of the right pocket or the left pocket, and, and you should be made aware of that. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> Hey, Mr. President. Mr. Mitchell. My name is R. L. Mitchell. I live. I be Zion at 3512 Mildred Street on the corner of Pasadena and Pasadena. And uh, about this budget stuff and the general plan is to get people to move out of the run away from their own property and stuff like that. And I was living. On, I was living there until my pay. Notice the house, he pulled me out of my own house without my permission, so he's not fit to live. And, and I knew Brown gave me a house that I didn't even know I had a, another house. And then the time they did that, somebody stole all my new furniture out of the house, and, and it's a sound in my basement, it's running water. And people talking about water, it's just like the sound like a, it's, a, it's a well under my house right there, and people talking about drinking out of Flint River, I want to walk them in and tear the house down. You sound like to me you're scared of the landlord, the slum landlord ready to, to do some bodily harm to you. That's why this dude over there at Davidson going to call the federal, don't want to see what the landlord do to you, you peoples. The only one person up here know what he's doing, and that's that Mays fella. And he's trying to... I know this... Um... And that's, a, that's his community, his, his daddy church down on, on, on Lee Street. I noticed when them uh, state boys are always making fun, they tried to, it sounded like they tried to kill him like they did Jimmy Hoffa, but they messed up and came clean up and took her. And all uh, that judge and, uh, and all that stuff, and every time he get, he about to win his own case, but that Peter Bay never showed up and, you know, they gave him over there grinning. And another thing about that, Another thing about my neighborhood, I like what uh, my councilman, this guy right here with the bow tie, he ain't got a bow tie on, how he represent that fight down the Burson Field House last night. The city police came down there instead of the state boys, making us look bad and all the stuff, the one that tried to do badly harm to that Goodman fellow who finna aid maze on the expressway with four flat tires. And, uh, and everybody think it's a drunken joke. And all this stupid, junkin, Chicago junkin, junk organized crap, and little boy on the prairie walking around you and Scott, that there you go right there. Stupid junkin, heathen. And uh, another thing, man, about this up. Uh, all right. And, hey. Now look, man. I want my. I want my. Thank you. you better, Is there anyone else that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing for the budget? Hi, my name is Margie Scott. I live at 401 East Moore. I've been having a problem with the weeds. I'm four feet ten inches tall. The grass, I think, is almost five feet tall. And when I come out, anybody can be in there. I can't see them. And I've been complaining about it. And I really wish somebody would come out and do something about it. And another thing is about the water bill. I got two water bills in one month. And I would like to know why. You know, is it a certain amount of days they sent them? But this is the first time I've gotten two bills in one month. And, you know, my husband is dead. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm on my own. I'm doing this. And I know I don't use that much water, not to make two bills. And I don't drink that much water. I buy it because it's nasty. 
and I really would like, you know, for somebody to tell me what's going on and come out and try to do what they need to do because I'm a widow and I really need help and I really appreciate all of you. My counselor is BB and Eric is my best.